Now, I, I don't follow you, Mr. Blenkinsop. These episodes in the past career of the witness, Mr. Champion, uh, were admitted as evidence without any objection on your part. Uh, no, my lord, with great respect. Since your lordship ruled they were admissible, I sought to prove they were harmless episodes. My lord, my submission is, my client, the petitioner, Mr. Lamb, said that he forbade his wife, the respondent, to associate with a co-respondent, Mr. Champion, on account of the latter's past career and general reputation regarding the opposite sex. Uh, no, no, on account of certain episodes. Uh, my learned friend is generalizing in his questions to the witness. Uh, well, you know, uh, Mr. Blenkinsop, you did the same. As your lordship pleases. Proceed, Mr. Cray. I thank your lordship. And now, Mr. Champion, to resume. You've informed us that you're a bachelor of considerable wealth. You've also been referred to, in evidence, as a Don Yuan. Do you agree with that estimate of your character? <laughs> well, it's a very complimentary one. Indeed. Then you consider yourself worse than Don Yuan. Oh, I wouldn't go as far as that, because after all, Don Yuan is still the real hero of more than half the world. The hero of more than half the world? Mm, yes, my lad, of the women. And if there are more women than men, that's more than half the world. I, I don't know, Mr. Crane, whether the members of the jury are really aware who Don Juan was. I thank your lordship. I should specify him as the patron saint of correspondence. Do you agree with that, Mr. Champion? Not at all, my lord. I should say he were a man with exactly the same instincts and habits as any other man. He had unusual luck, my lord. Good luck with the ladies and bad luck in getting found out. <laughs> so I take it that you regard as fair game any married woman who can be enticed to break up her home? Well, you can take nothing of the sort. I've never interfered with anybody's happiness and never would. Indeed. From your previous reply, I gathered that you regard all women not only as potential, but willing victims. <laughs> now, how can a woman be a victim if she's willing? All that I'm saying is that every man's and woman's first natural instinct is well, mutual admiration. I'm not asking you about natural instincts. <laughs> oh, yes, you are. And then if our people hadn't mutually admired each other, where would we be? Not that I'd mind very much about you. Silence! Now listen to me, Mr. Champion. I will not permit this method of retaliation in your replies to counsel. Well, I'm sorry, my lord. It isn't much fun when only one side's prepared to be honest with itself. You say you wouldn't interfere with anybody's happiness. In the case of a married woman who regarded herself as unhappy, what then? If she were a very sweet woman, tied up to the sort of husband, well, the sort of husband I expect you can imagine better than I can. Mrs. Lamb, the respondent, stated in her evidence that she was unhappy with her husband. <laughs> well, who wouldn't be? Sufficient reason in your estimation for her to seek consolation. He wanted to get rid of her, and he laid a trap for her to walk into. And being an honest-minded woman, she walked. If you call that seeking consolation. Do you agree that on the 12th of July last, you went to Mr. Lamb's home to keep a secret assignation with Mrs. Lamb? No, to talk to her. To talk to her? Yes, yes, we've been indulged with the resume of your moral principles. You went secretly, by night, to the house of this unhappily married lady to talk to her. I liked her and pitied her and wanted to help her. And if that's a crime, well, I'm perfectly content to be a criminal. In other words, at the psychological moment of domestic infelicity, enter Don Juan. Yes, but this is comment, Mr. Crane. <laughs> yes, but he got his dirty comment in before he was stopped. Behave yourself, sir. Proceed, Mr. Crane. Mrs. Lamb, in her evidence, stated that she did not invite you to the house. No, she didn't. So you just sneaked in? No, I didn't. I'm not in the habit of sneaking. Did you visit the house to see Mrs. Lamb? I've said so, haven't I? You don't suppose I went to see the cook? Though, as a matter of fact, she's quite a nice cook. So if any time you happen to want to cook... So, knowing that Mr. Lamb was away from home... I object, my lord. In about time, too. I submit that is in evidence. I put it to you, Mr. Champion. Put it where you like. Mr. Champion, I caution you, finally, I will not tolerate this behavior on the part of a witness. My lord, I only wish to say that my principles are as good as any other man's, only I'm more honest about things. That will do. I will not allow you to continue. Very well, my lord. 
But I should like a nice, quiet little chat with Mr. Crane's recording angel. I think this would be a convenient moment to adjourn, Mr. Crane. You're going to stay, I hope. Oh, rather. It's awfully interesting. Oh, it's a foregone conclusion. Still, I, I like you to be here at these cases when I'm in good form. Mr. Champion is the kind of witness you like, isn't he? Oh, a nice blackguard. I told him to straight. You wait till I address the jury. I suppose he's really lost the case for himself. Yes. What? Oh, he needed handling, Mark. You and I saw to that, I flatter myself. There aren't any women on the jury, are there? No, no. Why? Oh, nothing. Here is my client, the petitioner. A man against whose unfailing honor and stability not one particle of evidence can be maintained. A man whose one ambition was to support his wife in all the comfort and affection of the home. Where is one tittle of evidence to prove Mrs. Lamb's contention that my client sought to cause her unhappiness? No. She only decided to become the unhappy, ill-used wife when fate beckoned her into the sinister acquaintanceship of Mr. Champion. Mr. Champion. Unattached, officially at any rate, experienced, wealthy. Mr. Lamb knew how much honor to expect from Mr. Champion. So did Mrs. Lamb. And now, thanks to his attempt to gain sympathy for his loathsome code by a display of bravado from the witness box, we too are privileged to appreciate the moral standard of this lecherous, intriguing barnacle of society. Now, my lad, and members of the I say it blanket up. What? Well, Don't bother about what he's saying. Who is this beautiful girl with the tiger skin collar thing? When, according to unassailable evidence, he knew Mr. Lamb was absent, and where he remained... That's Mrs. Crane. Mrs. Crane. Mrs. Crane? Yes. You don't mean to tell me that she's been married so to that stiff? That's Crane's wife? Why? It may seem why? Why? That's what I'm wondering. Why? To repeat them in detail. <laughs> News call Janet Premier. News call Janet. Premier the war station result. Emmy damages. News call Janet Premier. News call Janet. Premier the war station result. Five thousand pound damages. News call Janet Premier. Mr. Champion, madam. Thank you. So this is where you live? Yes. <laughs> May I have a cigarette? Oh, do. Where do you keep your drink? Oh, in there. May I get you no, one? No, I'll help myself, thank you. You got some sherry? Yes. Oh, no, Stevie. It was the jury. What a bunch. Yes, you only had to look at their faces. I did as nicely as I could, but nothing clicked. 
We might have got away with it, but I couldn't control myself with Crane. That was the trouble. Well, I cried. I think that was a mistake. I took great pains about it, too. Now, listen. Let's have a heart-to-heart -heart talk. You are fond of me, aren't you? Oh, very fond. Don't think I'm blaming you, dear. It isn't that. I'd like to marry you. Oh, that's because you want to try and do the right thing. No, no, I wouldn't try and do the right thing with you. I know you're too old for that. No, you're just trying to make an honest woman of me. No, I wouldn't try and do that either. But we're in this mess together, we're fond of each other, and I marry you. Not because I've got to, because I like to. You are a wonderful man. <laughs> I don't suppose anybody else is thinking that just now. So there you are. You pop off abroad, and in six months, when the decree's made absolute, I'll come out to you. Not till then. No, it wouldn't be respectable. Oh, fancy you knowing about that. I didn't. And then I'll marry you, and we'll be very happy. Don't you worry. Who wouldn't be happy with a sweet little thing like you? Will you really be fond of me? Very fond of you, and very true to you. Don't be rash, dear. But I do promise you I'll never, never be a nuisance to you. If you stopped being a nuisance, you wouldn't be half such a pet. Come on, give me a kiss. You are a darling, Stevie. And are you going to stay here and have dinner with me? You bet. That would be lovely. One of my sisters is coming, and I think an aunt, but they're very nice. Very charming, I'm sure. But that takes me to the club. All right, Stevie. Always do just as you like, beginning from now. Thank you, darling. Tons of time. We happen to be there too late. Tired? Tired? Me? No. That sort of case exhilarates me. <sighs> nice damages, eh? Yes, huge. Of course, you made a great impression on the jury. Yes, I think I did. I'm glad you were there to hear it. I'm also glad you realized that I, I played some small part in it. What? Well, over there in the law courts, you said Mr. Champion lost the case for himself. No, no, darling. I quite see that you made him say those things. Oh, good. But you also said something about it being lucky there were no women on the jury. Well, after all, Mr. Champion must rather appeal to women, mustn't he? I mean, you could tell that by his record. What? A self-confessed blackguard like that? Do you mean to say that any decent woman... Uh, if you yourself were on the jury... All right, darling, don't get excited. I dare say it did carry on with Mrs. Lamb. Dare say? Hmm? I don't think it was absolutely proved. Five thousand pounds worth of proof, that's all. I mean, if there was any doubt about his guilt, that only shows how clever you were, doesn't it? Oh, well, if you put it like that. All the same, you seem to sympathize with the fellow. Oh, Vincent, don't be so snappy. No, no, my love. No, I'm not snappy. No, not at all. But a poisonous specimen like that. I sometimes wish that you wouldn't insist upon coming and listening to these cases. <laughs> Drink your cocktail, darling. Hmm? Oh. Mm. Stella. Yes? Uh, about this case. Uh, if they start discussing it at dinner, you will be discreet, won't you? Darling, you don't think I'd say anything about Mr. Champion that would make you feel small? Well, I should hope not. That's what you mean, isn't it? No, no. Well, what then? Well, I, I, I don't know, but I do wish you wouldn't keep on talking about the beastly case. Yes, but I, I don't know what he's got to grin about. Did he grin at you? No, he was grinning at you. Did he know who you were? Of course not. <laughs> he soon stopped grinning when he saw my face. I'll bet he did. You say you've got your car coming for you? Yes, but it won't be here yet. Well, that doesn't matter. I'm in no hurry. I'd be frightfully grateful for a lift. All right. I'll go and get ready. Well, don't be long, because it may be here any minute. Right, Hope. 
afraid you're a bit too good for me. Yes, but that's not saying much. Caddy, just a moment. Put the bag in the car. Spoon roll, boy. I want you to leave me. Why? Don't see the point. You don't have to see the point. All you have to do is to leave me. Leave you? Yes. But go and order me a drink. Right, what do you like? Whiskey? Yes, whiskey. Double? Any multiple you like, only hop it. Oh, you want me to go? Yes. Right there, old boy, only too pleased. I'm very sorry. That was very careless of me. I couldn't think what on earth had happened. Oh. Oh, yes. I really am very sorry. Oh, that's all right. You'd better retrieve them, hadn't you? <laughs> yes, thank you. And may I just seize the opportunity to thank you for something else? To thank me for something? Oh, you have nothing to thank me for. Oh, yes, I have. A smile I got the other day in court when I was in the middle of all that trouble and needed a smile pretty badly. Oh, that. Well, I'm afraid it wasn't entirely sympathy. I was amused at your being so candid. Oh, <laughs> I'm glad somebody was amused. Candid's rather an unusual virtue. Oh, even my virtues are unusual. I don't think you're as bad as they made out. Anyhow, I'm broad-minded. Mm, I guess that. Now, I don't want you to think that I'm imposing on you, but I must take advantage of this chance. I don't think it was entirely chance, Mr. Champion. I know you carefully roll those golf balls down the bank. <laughs> well, of course I did. Wouldn't it have been more honest to have come straight up and spoken to me? Oh, much. Then let's be perfectly honest with each other. Oh, good heavens, no. No respectable person's ever quite honest. Oh, no honest person is ever quite respectable. If you're respectable, you'll stop talking to me and go straight off. And if I'm honest, I'll stay. Which would you rather I were? I don't know. Well, I hope I do. Has your car come, Stella? I don't know. It may have. Would you be a dear and see? Me? Yes, because if it hasn't and you're in a hurry, you might make other plans. Oh. Well, I hope it has. I'll look. Oh, dash it. I suppose I ought to clear out. I know your husband's opinion of me. Oh, my husband's miles away in the depths of the law courts. And you didn't believe that all he said about me was true? Well, I don't think he said all there was to say about you. Oh, well, he couldn't have said much more. Oh, that we've heard all about. But nobody realized that apart from that, you might be a very good friend. You thought that? Yes, I did. Could you be a near friend? To you? Well, yes, for instance, to me. Yes, well, that's rather a difficult instance. Oh, good evening. Oh, Mr. Crane, I'm so glad you've come. Stella promised me a lift home. Oh, has she? Hmm. Oh, this is my brother, Henry, Miss Tapp. Miss Tapp? <laughs> what a go. Shut up. Well, where's Stella? Oh, she's on the practice putting green, talking to some man. Sounds bad. Well, Lord, I hope she hasn't invited someone else to share the car with us. I mean, there won't be room, will there? Oh, I don't think so. I don't know who the man was. I think he was giving her a lesson in how to putt. How to what? I'll go and find her. Well, I know I can't hope to see you again. You don't want secrets from your husband, and as I've said, I know what he thinks of me. That sounds a very high principled thing to say. Yes, I don't ever remember having said it before. Anyhow, you're saying it proves that my husband's wrong about you. Yes, the only trouble is that if I saw much more of you, I might prove he was right. <laughs> oh. oh. What are you doing talking to my wife? Oh, talking to your wife. Vincent, it's quite all right. It's not all right. It's outrageous cheek that this man should speak to you. Oh, it isn't. You don't understand. I understand perfectly. I know what your game is. Darling, don't make a scene out here. Well, keep quiet, please. I suppose this is your form of revenge on me. <laughs> my revenge on you? Getting a bit of your own back, eh, at my expense. What do you mean? Well, that's enough. Come along, Stella. The car's waiting. No, no, no. Wait a minute, sir. That's what you think of me, is it? I won't listen to you. But you've got to. No, please, Mr. Champion. No, no, not here, in public. What have we got to have this out? I'll call and see you. I've nothing more to say to you except that you're a meaner type of insidious sneak even than I thought. Oh, this is common, Mr. Crane. Oh, no, dear. Ooh. I do hope you're not going to be squashed. Because if I'd known Mr. Crane was coming, I'd never have asked for a lift. Well, that sounds rather rude, doesn't it? I do say silly things. 
What I mean is, Stella had no idea you were going to turn up. Had you? Are your people in the building trade? Building trade? No. Why? Well, you drop a very pretty brick. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want another? Yes. No. Oh, please yourself. Your mind seems rather in the clouds. You're quite right, it is. I'm thinking of an angel. Good heavens. Do you mean someone you've lost? No, I mean someone I've never really found. Why? Where's he been? Oh, don't be a clown. Four years of marriage began to notice a marked coldness of manner. Marked coldness of manner. Why the devil can't these people give details? Well, Barton, what is it? Mr. Champion has called to see you, sir. Mr. Champion? Well, you can tell him... Oh, no, wait a minute. Hold on. I might as well get this thing settled. All right, I'll see him. Yes, sir. Uh, will you come in, sir? Good evening. No, now you wait a minute. You just hear what I've got to say. I believe very little of what I hear. Of course you do. That's force of habit. But this isn't evidence given on oath. This is the truth. I don't care what explanation you give. This is what you think. You made a good job of exhibiting me as a blackguard and a, what was it? A barnacle. Not a very difficult job. So I retaliate by making secret and completely insincere advances to your wife, is that it? Ah, so you admit making advances? Stop that. You're not in court now. Is that what you think? I won't argue with you. I'll merely say this. You may be a society pest, but I'll take good care you don't pester my home. Vincent, darling, you're making an awful fuss about nothing. No, no, Stella, I want you to keep out of this. I talk to Mr. Champion just as much as he talked to me. And you don't think I'd do anything disloyal to you, do you? Of course you wouldn't, not even behind his back. He wasn't speaking to you. I've told you before, I don't blame you for a moment. I know you didn't realize it was indiscreet. <laughs> I still can't see that it was indiscreet. Of course she can't, or she wouldn't have done it. Besides, it wasn't. I think you'd better leave us. No, I'll do that. And if you will withdraw this accusation, I'll say goodbye. And never make any attempt to see Mrs. Crane again. All right, but in any case, she'll take good care of that, won't you, dear? Of course, if you wish it. Oh, but I think it's also unnecessary and theatrical. Well, that's only because you're so innocent. Yes, I suppose so. Yes, you're a very lucky husband, believe me. So was Lamb, no doubt. I'll ring the bell for Barton. Very well, then. I'm going to say goodbye for good. Yes. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Champion. Goodbye. That'll do. Yes. Goodbye. Goodbye. You needn't behave as if you didn't trust me. Thank you. As I told you before, I trust my wife. I happen to know women as well as you do. Oh, really? Then you must be a bit of a barnacle yourself. Vincent, darling, I'm so sorry to disturb you. Oh, no, you could never disturb me. <laughs> Why, what's up? I've had a letter from Mother from Lausanne. She wants us to go and stay with her for a month. For a month? Well, I can't spare a day. Do you want to go? No, not a bit, but it's a matter of duty. Why, is your mother ill? Oh, no. No, she wouldn't be. <laughs> it's company she wants, that's all. I hate to leave you, darling. Shall I go for a fortnight? Oh, very well. <laughs> I'll write to her then. Shall I send her your love? You know, that's curious. This very brief. I've got to prosecute a man who struck his mother-in-law. <laughs> yes, darling, of course. Give her my love. Oh, darling. <laughs> well? Have you got everything on? Yes, all except my shoes. Between us, we made that bedroom in an unholy mess. <laughs> Darling, I had to unpack. What, for one night? We're only breaking the journey here, you know. I know, and I'm glad we did. It's so restful. And that bedroom doesn't look very restful at the moment. No, but I'll come up early and pack. <laughs> I see. <laughs> What's the matter? Your shoes tight? These Swiss places make my feet swell. Oh, poor little feet. Never mind. We'll be in Paris this time tomorrow. Lovely. Oh, but don't think I haven't liked Switzerland, darling. It's been a marvelous honeymoon. <laughs> oh, with all modesty, I should say it was an improvement on your last one. Hmm? Oh, Stevie. <laughs> Come on.
Come on, let's go to dinner. Do I look nice? You never know who you may meet in these places. You won't meet anyone who admires you more than I do. No, I suppose not. But you may meet someone you admire more than you do me. Oh, Buck, that's a thing of the past. Come on, let's get away out of here. No, but I'm leaving you two to dine alone together. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> no, he doesn't mind. Mother's been invited to dine in a private suite with the people she's playing bridge with. Such a nuisance. But I had to accept. You two can dine and dance together. I did. Yeah. Well, in that case, I'll send Busby off and drive home myself tonight. Is he waiting outside? Yes, I don't know what he wants him. Just a moment, I'll get rid of him. My God, did you see that fella? Yes, but he didn't seem to know you. No, and he'd better not have any reason to, either. Why? What's the matter with him? He's one of those hounds who hang about continental resorts, getting hold of women. Uh, one moment. Uh, one dry martini and one white lady. Very good. Queer finding that fellow here. Last time I saw him, he was on the Riviera. What does he do, exactly? I told you, get hold of women and praise on them. Good heavens, sounds like one of those bogus persons. Oh, don't be a mug. This is a real bad lad. Anything from blackmail downwards. I shouldn't have thought he'd find much here. Oh, just a place for it. Full of nice, fat, susceptible old ladies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Skip. Stop your moaning. Our dames are all alike. Now, I tell you, Mrs. Crane's on the level. Yes, I've seen that kind, too. They're the first to weaken. Now, your chance is just as soon as the old girl leaves you alone. But she might suspect something. She'll suspect nothing. Everything will appear perfectly regular to her if you play it right. Take her easy and don't crowd her. Well, I'll do my best. Everything's going to be all right. I've been handling dames ever since before I left high school. That's why I left high school. Now, go on. All right. There you are. Look, see? I lost my cigarette case. Perhaps they've got it in the office. No, it can't be there. I haven't been in the office. Let's go and see. There you are, I told you. He's hooked to beauty. He's not a bad looker, Steve. Of course not. He trades on that. I believe the nicer a man looks, the worse he is. Oh, but he's nearly as nice looking as you, darling. Oh, thank you, my sweet. You always say the right thing. Come on, let's have some dinner. Not a bad sort of hotel. Nice there, too. Well done. Say, this is a surprise. Yes, indeed it is. Are you staying here? Yes, for another week with my mother. Are you? Yes, uh, but for one night. Uh, but not with my mother. This is my wife. How do you do? Oh, I see. Yes, I mean... If... Yes, we've been married. I didn't know. Well, we hardly knew ourselves. It was done out here in Swiss. I congratulate you. Thank you. Uh, could you dine with us? No, I'm just waiting for someone here. I see. In any case, I mustn't talk to you, must I? I forgot that. I think that's the best thing to do about it. Your husband's in England, I take it? Yes. Good. Give him my kind regards. It was a very tantalizing thing to happen. <laughs> Yes, very. I'm glad you like her. Oh, I do. I think she's one of the nicest people I've ever known. Who is she? Who is she? You darling sap, why you sat next to her all through the case in court. Oh, yes, that's who she is, of course. Who is she? Why, she's Mrs... Yeah. 
monsieur. Garçon, changez cette nappe, vite. I'm sorry, darling, I spilled the wine. That's all right, darling, it's lucky. What made you do it? Look over there, and you may understand. Oh, yes, look, that bad man's got him. Yeah, he may think he has. No, it's no good. I can't stand by and see her fall into the clutches of that rat. Well, you can't blame her, dear. I mean, I might have done the same if you hadn't told me about him. I mean, if you hadn't been here. If I hadn't been married to you, I mean, I might have. Oh, don't, there's a dear. Curious situation. I promised I'd never speak to her again. Not that that matters. Especially if she's heading for trouble. Sorry. It's all right. You keep doing that. I'm just thinking. Well, whatever you do about it, I won't interfere, Stevie, so don't mind me. No, <laughs> but I do mind you. It's your honeymoon. And I'm not going to spend it messing about with other people's troubles. Even hers. <laughs> At least I don't suppose so. Well, if you feel it's your duty. After all, I wouldn't be on my honeymoon if you hadn't done your duty. None of that. If you ever say that to me again, I'll give you a good spanking. You are so loving to me. Don't you make any mistake. You're the only one now. I know that better than you do, darling. Yes. Come on, let's go back to our room. We've got to make an early start in the morning. Give us a chance, dear. Yeah? Room number seven. There you are. Come on, my sweet. So you go on up. I want to make sure about this train. Oh, but you've got it all written down, darling. Yes, but people often write things down they don't mean, and it causes a lot of trouble. So you, you pop off. All right, darling. I shan't be long. As long as you like, darling. <laughs> anyway, you know one of these when you see it, don't you? Well, thank you, sir. Now, Mrs. Crane, who's staying here. Yes, sir. The gentleman who's in there with her. And Mr. Gerald Lyle. Is he staying here too? No, sir. He come here very often, but he not live here. He have a chalet. A chalet? Near here, on the lake or somewhere? No, sir. Out of the town, somewhere. Oh, well, exactly where? You uh, won't think me inquisitive, will you? Thank you, sir. No, not just yet. Oh, is she still dancing with that fellow? Yes, and I've got some information. He's been at it ever since she came here. And even before that, he got busy with the mother. That shows he takes his work pretty seriously. Yes, so I'll wait up and have a little talk with her. All right, darling. Oh, I forgot I oughtn't to have done that. Wouldn't have kissed me, why not? Because I believe I'm going to get a cold in the head. Well, sleep's the best thing for that, my pet. So you nip back into bed again. You're not feeling bad, are you? No, it's nothing to worry about. Yes, it is. There's no hurry for me to go, so I'll wait here with you. Do you want to dance anymore? I wouldn't mind, but this is the last. Is it? Yes, so it is. Extraordinary people out here, the hours they keep. Fresh air makes them sleepy. I hate these early nights, don't you? Oh, it's very trying to the system. Life only begins at this time at any reasonable place. I think I should get my cargo for a run around the lake. Is that the best thing you can find in the way of local nightlife? <laughs> Sounds pretty dissipated, doesn't it? As a matter of fact, it's rather attractive. I often go for a run at night. Would you care for it? What, to go for a run in the car? Well, not unless you're keen, but it's something to do. Yes, I'd love to. You would? Grand. Just for half an hour or so? That's all. Well, that's fine. When do we go now? As soon as you like. I'll get a coat. Right, I'll get the car. That'll be lovely. Has Mr. Lyle gone? Yes, sir. He has? Yes, sir, a moment ago. And where's Mrs. Crane? She has gone to her room, sir. Gone to bed? Yes, sir, uh, just a moment ago. Dash, I wonder if I could... Does she sleep with her mother? No, sir. Well, that's lucky. Well, how could I get a hold of her? 
I sent her to tell her you want to see her, no? Mm, no, she mightn't understand that. I'll phone her a room. Yes, if you care, you could speak from the office. Thanks, I'll do that. Yes, sir. You've been quick. Yes, I only had to get my coat. Well, here we are. No, sir, no reply. No, it's very odd. All right. Gosh, what fools women can be. <laughs> Are you on here all night? Uh, no, sir. The night men, he come on almost now. Oh, well, give him this and, and, and tell him that directly Mrs. Crane comes back to phone my room. Yes, sir. And, no, don't phone. It'll disturb my wife. She's got a cold in her head and heaven knows what. And, oh, well, go on. You have it. You know where we are now, don't you? I haven't the foggiest idea. Oh, yes, you have. This is the road that goes past the chalet. What, your cottage? Did I come here? Oh, now you've got to take me all the way back. Oh, this is the way back. Don't you see? We've come right round. Oh, I see. Now that we're here, we may as well have a drink. I don't really want one unless you do. It's up to you. I'd love one. But you don't mind, do you? No. Can't you wait till you get back again? No, come on. All right, it's all the same to me. Place all in darkness, haven't you any service? Oh, I have an old Swiss lady who does for me, but she sleeps out. Busby's about here somewhere, I expect. Does he stay here at night? No, you see, I garage the car down in Lausanne, and he waits up here till I'm through with it. Oh, how quaint. Yes, like it. Now then, what'll you have? Oh, I don't know. You seem rather pensive tonight. Anything the matter? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I expect I'm getting sleepy. Listen. What's that? The car. I thought it's Busby. He's taking it home. Now, Busby! Busby! Stop! <laughs> Do you ever know such a blithering fool? How did he get the car? I suppose he heard me arrive, didn't wait to ask, dashed out and pushed off. We must get him back, that's all. This is a nice game. I am sorry. Look here, let's go inside and see what we can do about it. Are you on the phone? No, that's the devil of it. Can't you get a message to him? There's no one to send. Besides, it's seven miles into Lowe's End from here. Mm, what a place to come and live. Oh, it's all right in the ordinary. Imagine you'd be asleep by that time. I probably would. <laughs> Listen, don't think I'm being lazy and don't want the walk. I don't, a bit, but that's not the point. What then? Well, if you waited here for about four hours instead of three, there are lots of people about in the early morning. What people? Well, market carts and things. I see. I'm to wait here all night and go back at him in a market cart. Well, I could go then and fetch the car, but it's a ghastly thought to walk down there now. So I sail into the hotel out of your car in evening dress at breakfast time. No, long before oh. then, and nobody need know. Know what? So long as you don't think it matters. I mean, you're staying here. Making the best of a bad job, isn't it? Well, I'm very sociable by nature, but I really can't sit up and talk all night. Of course not. Look here, make yourself absolutely at home. I'm dead to I shall go to sleep. Rather, I'll keep a good lookout, and when I can raise help, I'll give you a shout. Would you like to borrow a dressing gown or anything? No, thanks. Well, don't spoil your lovely frock. Look here, I'll get you a hanger for it. Thanks. I don't want a dressing gown. I'll wear this coat. You're being very good-natured about it all. <laughs> no, I'm just being sensible. off the main road. Come down a bit. She might overhear us. I 
I can creep in there, all right, if only she's asleep. You've got to make certain she's asleep. Get in, get the dress, and get out. <laughs> That's all the difficult part. Listen, she goes on sleeping till about five in the morning. I'm here with the car. You bust into the room, say, come to life, sister. I've got the car. She gets up, tickles her death, looks around, misses the dress, says, oh, oh, my frock. <laughs> yes, it's then. Well, simple. You're innocent. You say, don't be funny. I haven't seen your frock. You had it last. What did you do with it? Oh, she'll know well enough. Doesn't matter. Play her out. Pretend to be looking for it. Say, my goodness, this is terrible. Must be around here someplace. It couldn't have blown away. Then you turn on her. Get hard. Say, listen, what kind of a game are you trying to weaken? It's easy. If she don't, it's a fight. Either way, she's in the bag. She might put the cops onto it. Cops? Has she spent the night in your room out of her dress? Say, I thought you said you knew dames. Well, I hope it works. You go back to where you left the car. Right. What do you think you're doing? I'm sorry I disturbed you. Never mind about that. What are you doing? I, I thought you were asleep. Why did you come in this room? I believe you've been plotting all the time to trap me up here in this rotten hole. Well, what if I have? Who the hell's that? You dirty cheat! Give me back that dress! Oh. Give that to me. Who are you? Never mind who I am. Give that to me. All right, then. That's all. Come along. I don't see how I was to know. He seemed quite a decent sort of man. Well, I'm glad he wasn't, in a way. Why? What do you mean? Well, even if he had been as decent as you thought, I should still wanted to suck him on the jaw. Why? Because he was out with you. Have you found it difficult all this time to remember your promise about me? If you have chronic toothache, do you find it difficult to notice it? Was it that, is that? Yes. I was put on my honor, too, you know, about you. Yes. Why, have you been finding it at all irksome? Yes, if that's any consolation to you. Well, of course it is. Great consolation. But consolation's a very indifferent cure for toothache. <laughs> get out, get out. You wish for a lift, please? No, you keep out of it. I'll call you if I want you. Now then, what was that you were saying? You see what I mean? You'll be gone in a few hours' time, and that man Lyle may try to pester me. You won't do that, because you'll be gone too. Where? Home. You go and pack your things and catch the train with me and my wife. But you're going to Paris. You could stay the night in Paris and go back to London the next day. All right, I will. It'll mean leaving Mother, but... You warn her to have nothing whatever to do with him. Why? Do you think he might try to take advantage of Mother? Oh, I hardly think that. He didn't seem very brave. Hi, right, come on, then. Leafed. Well, this is swell. I fall in the dark and nearly break my leg, and you get a sock on the kisser. He took me by surprise. Yeah, and that makes me partner to a punching bag. I'd have got around if that fellow hadn't shown up. See, who is this Romeo? Who tipped him off, and how does he get in on the play, anyway? I tell you, I don't know, and I don't like him. I'm through. You look it. Well, I am not. Not as long as I've got this little souvenir found on the bedside table. She'll want that back, I expect. Probably the gift of a loving husband. Makes me feel pretty tough. Almost breaks my heart to look at it. <laughs> you can do what you like, and you'll have a good break of that fellas with her. Say, just what does he mean to her? Is her husband wise to him? Why, ask me. Never mind, I've handled dames. And this one's a cinch. I've had enough of you and your methods. You kid yourself, you're smart. You're just a common hand crook and a failure at that, and always have been. That's what you think. Now, you're through, and I'm a lone wolf from here on. Go ahead and see where you finish up. Your gas escape. Okay. You're counted out. And that's the second time this morning. You go and wait in the car, darling. Oh, isn't Mrs. Craig coming at our car to the station? No, she must go on her own. Oh, do you want her to go alone? No, but there isn't room in our car. You carry on, darling. All right, darling. Well, are you all set? Yes, they booked me a carriage on the train. I'm just sending a wire to my husband. It's rather difficult to tell him why I'm leaving. Oh, I wouldn't tell him why till you get home. I wouldn't tell him too much then. 
simply returning home tomorrow, staying tonight, Hotel Pasto, Paris. And then just love Stella. Yes, why not? All right. Hotel Pasta. That's a new one on me. It's a small place, quite nice. We always stay there. Louis is the manager there. Louis? Used to be the head waiter at Zero's in London. Oh, yes, I know the fellow. Send that wire, please. And will you telephone the Hotel Pasta in Paris and book me a room for tonight? Certainly, madame. Have you got a taxi? Yes, thank you. Well, you've got plenty of time. I'll see you at the station. <laughs> this hotel, ain't it? Well, I want to talk to Mrs. Crane. It's important. What's that? She's gone. Where? When? What time does that train leave? Stop. That's the trouble with men. You get to know them too well before you know them well enough. Yes, that's why I'm on my way home. <laughs> Best thing to do, cut it out as quick as possible. Yes, I've always believed in that. Oh dear, my cold. <laughs> well, it didn't keep you awake last night, that was one good thing. No, I didn't even hear you come to bed. Oh, <laughs> well, that was another good thing. <laughs> By code. No, it isn't that, but I'm not going to be a worry to you. But we'd like you to be, don't we, Steve? <laughs> yes, darling. You always say the right thing, even if you say it in the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> You're both very kind, but I'm perfectly all right now. I've got a nice carriage all to myself. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs> got something for you. I suppose Mr. Lyle sent you. <laughs> well, I'm not in the least afraid of you. I'm not what you think. You are, and it's not a very ladylike thought. I thought you might be interested in knowing that I'm on my way to London to meet Mrs. Lyle. Oh, don't try to bluff me. There isn't a Mrs. Lyle. Oh, yes, there is. And it's in her interest that I've been working. And I guess I've got enough evidence for her purpose. That doesn't concern me in the very least. No? Well, maybe you'll recognize this little brooch found in his bed. It wasn't in the bed. I left it beside the bed. All right. How about your way? But it was in the bed with me. See here, Mrs. Crane. You can't afford to get mixed up in this because Mrs. Lyle will undoubtedly take her case to a very prominent English divorce lawyer. Oh, you swine. Ah, oh, don't get me wrong, lady. There's a way we can settle this matter. What are you suggesting? Blackmail? Now, nah, don't use ugly words. Remember, I also have a duty to Mrs. Lyle, and I'm a very conscientious man. Now, shall we say a little matter of 2,000 pounds? Get out of my way. Hang it over. You better grab it. That's my bottom figure. Thank you, Stevie. What's the matter? Anything wrong? <laughs> yes. Oh, but I can't keep running to you. No, of course not. I'll come to you. I'm just going along with Mrs. Crane for a moment. Do you mind? We'll find him. You come and point him out to me. I won't. You can't go and get into some row on the train. He'll get into a row, not me. When you're with your wife and everything? No, I won't do it. What's he look like? An old fat man in a grey suit. But you're not to go and look for him. All right, but in case I see him hanging around here. A fat man in a grey suit. Fat man in a grey suit. Fat man in a grey suit. Mitchie, it shows for himself. Say, have on you? All right. That man in the gray suit. Yes. 
Ten plus here, all is busy. No, no, no. Mais monsieur, c'est phénoménal, par exemple, vous ne connaissez donc pas la politesse, je vous en prie, vous voyez qu'on est là comme des sardines. Mais que c'est des moutons. Oh mon Dieu, qu'il est imbécile cet homme-là. Heavens, I upset a party of the League of Nations. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Pardon me. <laughs> Very narrow place, this. Yes, yes. Thank you. Not at all, thank you. Seen him again? No, I expect he's waiting till I get back to Paris. He knows I'm going to the pastor. Yeah, but you're not. You come with Ivy and me to our hotel. Oh, but you I... must. With this man badgering you, you'll stick to us. But it isn't fair to you or to your wife. It's perfectly fair. You might as well say it isn't fair to your husband. I only want to protect you. At least, I'm only going to protect you. Mm. It's simply a matter of honor. Yes, it is, isn't it? Yes, it is. And that's what makes it all so very innocent. And so very provocative. Mm. Oh, Button, you the car there? Uh, yes, sir. And your brother, uh, Mr. Henry, has just called to see you, sir. Well, tell him I can't see him now. Very good, sir. Hello, Vincent. I thought I'd just pop in and see you. Hadn't anything better to do? Well, I, I can't stop now. I'm just off to Paris. Paris? What for? What are you, sleuthing a co-respondent or something? No, no. Uh, Stella's there uh, on her way home. What, already? Yes, I don't know why, but... I had a wire from her, so I'm just flying over to meet her. Why? Well, why not? Pleasant little surprise for her, that's all. You sure that's all? What the, what the devil do you mean? It seems a lot of trouble to fly over there just for that. You don't suggest that I'm going over there to spy on her, do you? On Stella? Good Lord, what do you think she's been up to? How dare you say a thing like that? Well, I didn't, you did. I did not. Why don't you take your hat off when you come into other people's houses? I said I was going over there to meet her merely as a surprise. Pleasant surprise, you said. Well, why not? Of course. Why not? I mean, say, if she'd been up to any funny business, well, <laughs> she wouldn't be such a fool to send that wire. Well, can you stop talking like that about Stella? It's me, it's you. Oh, go to hell. Why, it's Mr. Crane. Yes, yes. Let me see, you're... Um... You remember me? Lamb. Oh, yes, yes, that's right, of course. Yes, you're Lamb, yes. One of your many clients. Yes. Where are you off to? Oh, Paris. I've hired a special plane. So have I. Same destination. Yes, I often fly over to Paris for Sunday nowadays. Uh-huh. Business, mind you. Well, naturally. There's a lot of business to be done in Paris on Sunday. Good day. Hey. That's all right. I don't want any more of that. He knows. I can only Hotel Bazaar. Ah, there you are. I'll call at the past on the way and cancel my room. But you can do that by phone. No, there may be a wire for my husband. I'd better call. All right. Have you seen any more of that gentleman? Yes, I've just seen him. He's standing there watching me. Where is he? No, he went off. Don't please do anything. He's trying to follow you, is he? All right, I'll come with you in your tent. Oh, but your wife? She can go ahead. She won't mind. She doesn't mind anything. I'll tell her. Ivy, darling. Listen. Roger. Have you a telegram for me? Uh, you know, Mrs. Crane. No, madame. Well, I booked a room here, but I'm very sorry. I've had an invitation to stay with some friends, so I'm afraid I have to cancel it. I'm very sorry, madame. We'd like to have you stay with us. Oh, that's very nice. Is Louis about? I'll see, madame. Monsieur would like a nice cup of coffee? Yes. What's that? 
Marie. I'm so happy to see you, madame. I'm not staying after all. Oh. I had just to see you. I'm staying with friends. You're going at another hotel? I can't help it, Louis. I'm not very often unfaithful to you. Oh, madame, it's a knife in my heart. <laughs> I can't stand with a taxi waiting. And Mr. Crane also is well, I hope. Uh? He's very well indeed, but very busy. Goodbye, Louis. Au revoir, madame. Sit, Mr. Champion, and I've missed him. I got no use for him. Monsieur. Go on, beat it. Bagage, monsieur. What's that? Bag. Oh, don't you worry about that. I see here. There's a lady stopping in this hotel, an English lady, Mrs. Crane. You get it? Mrs. Crane, a lady, a dame. Une dame. Well, dame, if you like. But now look here. You get her room number for me. Numero DL Apartment. Savvy? Madame Crane? Oui, oui, bon. You get her room number for me, and I'll fix you up. Okay? See? All right, scram now. Are you uh, alone, sir? Well, you can see that, can't you? Uh, yes. You don't ask silly questions. Uh, no, sir. Of course I'm alone. Good job, too. No more than that for me. You are absolutely normal. Oh, I am sorry. Sorry? Why? Because it makes me seem so silly. Well, you're absolutely normal, darling. But you want to go out and enjoy yourself, and I only want to go to bed. What now? Well, that's what I'd rather do if you don't mind. Oh, I don't mind, my sweet. Oh, but it seems so unreasonable to come to Paris and go to bed. Oh, I don't think that sounds very unusual. <laughs> All right, then. Pop a log. <laughs> I'll have some food up here. You go on and dress. She means it. <laughs> it's very unselfish of you. Why, I'm all right here. You don't want to stay in all night, and I'm sure Stevie doesn't. <laughs> well, the way things have turned out, we know it can't matter. What do you mean, dear? What does it matter? Well, I don't suppose her husband would like it much, that's all. Oh, rats. She doesn't know you as well as I do. Besides, you're buried, doll. <laughs> yes, darling. Oh, I'm not worrying about that. I'm only worrying about you. Juicy? All right, then. I'll go and dress and wait for you downstairs. I do think it's sweet of you. <clears throat> not at all. I hope we have a nice time. <laughs> you know, Ivy, darling, I wouldn't budge out of here unless I knew you wanted me to. I do. Whatever you want to do, I don't want you not to, Stevie. Sure you'll be quite happy? Lovely. I shall just browse. I love browsing. I think I'm a browser by nature. Oh, adorable. Jeté. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening, sir. Mrs. Crane arrived yet? Yes, sir. But she cancel her room and go. What do you mean? Why? Well, uh, she says she go to stay with some friend. A friend? Who? I don't know, sir. But she spoke with Louis. Perhaps Louis knows. Send for Louis, will you? Yes, sir. Mais qu'est-ce qu'il y a donc Il veut savoir où Mrs. Crane est partie. Pourquoi elle veut savoir Mais je ne sais pas, j'ai été vous chercher. Il fallait me chercher plus tôt. Il fallait faire quelque chose. Non, 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 never mind. Just can that foreign chatter. Why can't you talk English Mrs. Crane has cancelled her room, sir. Cancelled her room Yes, sir, and left immediately. Where'd she go to, to another hotel. I do not know which one. No, you wouldn't. Well, go on, get out of here, beat it. Go on. That goes for you, too. Scram. She went to another hotel. Yes, Mr. Craig, she says that. Did she name a hotel? No, sir. She went to a friend, I'm told. Do you know the name of the friend? <laughs> no, sir. Was she alone in the taxi? No, sir. She was not alone in the taxi? Uh, no, sir. Someone was with her. Well, who was she? No, sir. Please, a gentleman. A gentleman? Who? Uh, please, sir, I know him. A very nice gentleman. Well, who? 
It's all right, sir. Well, of course it's all right. What do you suppose? Who was he, that's all? Mr. Stephen Champion, sir. Stephen Champion? Please, Mr. Craig. Shut up. That's all. That's all. Yes, Mr. Craig. Book me a room here. A single room, sir? No, a double room with a telephone. All our rooms have a telephone, sir. And give me a list of Paris hotels. Yes, sir. Uh, is that the Hotel Maurice? Is Mrs. Crane staying there? Crane. Hello. Hello, is this the Hotel de la Paix? Have you and Mrs. Crane stopping there? Crane. C like in cabbage. C-R-A-N-E. Crane. Is that the Hotel de Beaux Arts? Uh, will you kindly tell me if Mrs. Crane is staying there? Will you? Here, sir. You seem rather worried. Anything the matter? They told me a man rang up asking whether I was staying here. Oh, our friend in the grey suit. Of course. Now he may follow me to London. Oh, I don't want to tell my husband. Well, you needn't unless you have to. He'll be very kind and all that, but well, it's my pride, you understand? Yes, I do. Besides, that man's got my brooch. I wish I could get a chance to tackle him. Oh. Let's forget trouble. We're out together. Let's make the most of it. Yes. Detective Tonks here. Thank you. Is Mr. Stephen Champion stopping here? Mr. Champion, uh, yes, sir. Um, room 204. Alone? Uh, no, sir. Uh, Mrs. Champion is with me. Mrs. Champion? Oh, thank you. No wonder Crane flew to Paris. Oh. Ah, I'm not surprised to see you. You're quite right. What are you talking about? I know why you've come here. I can tell you something, too. I don't want to be told anything. Oh, yes, you do. I saw for myself. Saw what? Come over here. I know this fellow champion. He's a wrecker. He did it on me, and now he's getting his own back on you. You wanted to tell me of something you saw. Well, I saw him and your wife going out together arm in arm, just like a married couple. Well, a newly married couple. Does that concern you? And he's booked a room here for Mr. and Mrs. Champion. I found that out for you, too. Oh, did you? Well, I happen to know that my wife booked a room here in her own name. They often do that. The lady books a room in her name, and the fellow books a room for himself and wife. Then they can stay together, and she has an alibi in the register. Don't you dare say that of my wife. I'm only telling you of the dodge. Fancy me telling you a thing like that. I want to be told nothing. All right. Well, I must be off. I'm sorry, but I've got an appointment. You needn't be sorry as far as I'm concerned. Madam Crane has gone out, sir. Well, that's tough after all the trouble I had to locate her. Uh, you will leave a message, sir? No, I think I'll call back. I reckon I can find something to pass the time away. I wonder whether we're being fooled. You mean to be out together? Yes. Well, if it makes you feel as happy as you look, we are. I couldn't help it. I couldn't miss the chance of being with you. Well, you know how I feel about it. I know now what people mean when they talk about exquisite torture. Still, I suppose the greatest torment in hell is being taken and being shown a glimpse of heaven. <laughs> we don't know anything about hell and never will. We're two very lucky people. We couldn't be any happier, could we? No, of course we couldn't be. Hmm. Well, at any rate, we mustn't be. Hmm?
Has Mrs. Crane come in yet? Not yet, sir. Quite an evening. When she comes in, give her that note, will you? Very good, sir. And if she asks for me, I'll be around here. Are you staying in the hotel for the night, sir? Looks like I am. The gentleman leave that for you. He's saying he wait here. But here in this hotel? Yes, sir. Our fat friend, I suppose. Yes. Imagine at this time of night. Tell him Mrs. Crane will see him alone in her room. Very good. Oh, but... It's all right. That's what we want. Now, I'll come to your room keep somewhere out of sight. He's got to be settled with. I must get my brooch back. The point is, I'll be able to hear what he's got to say. All right. Oh, thank goodness you're with me, that's all. Vincent! 
Yes. I go inside. Why are you here? I knew you were in this room. I saw you come in. Well, there's no argument about that. But how did you get here? That's what I want to know. I dare say you do. I flew over to meet you, out of affection. A nice repayment. Don't you talk to her like that. That's your privilege, I suppose. Well, I'm going to show you that it's not your privilege. Stella, you can't realize what you've done. But I haven't. You've let this man entice you into forgetting your promise and your loyalty. Well, he's not going to contaminate me into forgetting mine. But, Vincent, you don't know. I know this, and this is all I want to know. But not even my anger, and not even my distress, is stronger than my love for you. It does away with any recrimination, and even with any forgiveness. It's simply there, always, beyond anything. The one great inspiration of my life. And of mine. My love for you. You know that too. I do. Then why must you damage it? Why let this miserable little poisonous intrigue creep in and blemish the most precious thing in your heart? Oh, it's a very old story. The oldest story in the world. The two blissful lovers and the snake. Snake? By gosh, he almost makes me believe it's true. Well, it's not going to smash me. You're coming back with me, home. Oh. Not because I tell you to, not so much for my sake, but for your own sake, because you love me as I love you. Oh, but Vincent, darling, of course I'm coming home with you. Oh. Crane, I've misjudged you. I don't want a word from you. Oh, but you've got to have one. We've been pretty rude to each other in the past, but with all your supreme court pomposity, you're a very admirable bloke. And you're the vilest type of treacherous, revengeful betrayer. Get out of my sight. Oh, no, don't go and spoil it all. No, don't, darling. Oh, dear, when he's been so magnificent. Seems almost a shame to tell him. Oh, for goodness sake, don't tell him. Of course I'm going to tell him. He can't do you an injustice like that. I don't care a damn about his injustice. He's all right with you. I mean, why spoil a good thing? You've done enough without trying to get her to bluff me. I don't need telling anything. Of course you don't. You don't need telling, you know. You can recognize dishonor at a glance. You make your living out of it. Nobody can deceive you. Well, you can't. Oh, rather not. You know my character through and through. You turned it inside out in public, slung it in the mud and stamped on it. The vile and scandalous spectacle of a man who had the audacity to go through life as an undisguised human being. As a liar and a cheat. <laughs> a liar and a cheat, I see. Because a man is frank and open about his human nature, he's bound to be a liar and a cheat when it comes to his honor. Honor? <laughs> That's good from you. When I caught you red-handed like a thief? Vincent, now you are being a perfect idiot. I tell you there's an explanation. And I've told you that no explanation is wanted. Of course not. Now there we are in perfect agreement. It isn't wanted because your wife is the most loyal woman in the world. You needn't try to tell me that. No. And you are loyal to her in return. Right. But this is where you come unstuck. You can't believe that if you, the model of high-principled virtue, can be loyal to her, I, the model of a normal, straightforward sinner, can be as loyal as you can. It's true, Vincent. I'll tell you all about it. Please, go and leave him to me. Well, if you want to tell him, I can't stop you. Crane, I leave you to your wife. She seems determined to explain. I've told you twice already, no explanations are wanted. No, and I agree with you. Your way's the only way. Perfect love and trust and be blowed to everything. So, in perfect love and trust, I leave you together. Yes. What the devil are you doing? Get out of the room. You're a grand fellow, Crane. And what a different old story it all might have been if only you had been cast for Adam. Anyway, exit the snake. Ah! Then bless my soul, you're the fella. Yeah, yeah. What fella? I remember you. We ran up against each other on the train. In fact, we stayed up against each other for quite a while. What's the idea? Well, you see, I'm a friend of Mrs. Crane's. That's why I was in there. And she wants me to see you and settle up the whole thing. Good. Say, from what I heard, that's her husband in there, ain't it? Quite right, it is. 
That's the reason I came out. He's a bit of a nuisance. You know, jealous. Mm. That's why we've got to fix it up with you. Sure, sure. The lady told you about me knowing everything. Sure. So you come along to my room. It won't take a minute. Sure. Have you got the brooch with you? Yeah. I've told her my terms, and I don't want any argument about it. No, no, and believe me, it isn't my fault you've been kept waiting so long. Step in, will you? Sure. Yes, uh, now then. He not only rescued me, he guarded me. Yes, I was all wrong about him. Still, my dear, I think it was a very reasonable mistake. Not if you really knew him. Well, I'm not often glad to be wrong. I'd better go and tell him I'm sorry. <laughs> well, you can't now, darling. He'll be with his wife. His wife? Yes, he met at Ivy Lamb. Great Scott. All this makes me look rather a fool. Oh, no, it's the greatest thing that ever happened. And it gave you a chance to show how much you love me. You didn't have to be shown. Still, it was a pretty good test. You loved me and forgave me before I could say a word. Oh, of course. There was nothing to forgive. That wasn't your fault, darling. Huh? I mean, uh, well, you want to know. Oh, I mean, uh, oh, I don't know what I mean. <laughs> Kiss me. <laughs> There we are, then. I think that's all settled very nicely. Say, ain't you the guy that Lyle met at the chalet? Yes, that was me, too. You ought to learn to control yourself, brother. There's harm in you. this time. Good heavens, what the blazes is up? You! Out all night with that woman. What's the matter with you? Are you awake? Yes, for the first time I ever wake. Now I understand how much you love me. Well, you sent me out with her, didn't you? Yes, because I wanted you to find out how much nicer it is to be with me. And look how long it's taken you to do it. Jealous, by God. Of course I'm jealous. Who wouldn't be jealous? You enjoy yourself with that ugly, scheming cat while I'm lying here sniveling, you beast. Oh, that's the kind of woman you are, is it? A beast yourself, a little tiger. Splendid. I know exactly what to do with your sort. I heard you in this room just now. What were you doing to her then? I heard you kissing her. Oh, this is grand. I can handle you. Don't you ever dare touch me again. Oh, won't I? I'll show you. Now, don't try to run away. You've been warned. Put me down, Stevie. Now I know we're going to be happy. Put me down. Ah. Stevie, put me down, I say. No, Stevie, no. What you mean? 